there were two things that kept popping up over and over and over again regarding the description of Lilith. The first one being a redhead, the second one being a snake. Red-headed snake. And you know, I can think of at least a half dozen men who would describe me the exact same way. of Growing Up Fundy. I am your host, Sydney Davis Jr. Jr. And first of all, I know it's been over a week since I posted the last episode, to which I greatly apologize, but I was on the road. I was traveling for several days. Um, there, I think I spent probably 16 hours in the course of, I don't know, 48 hours on the road driving. So, you know, couldn't record a podcast. But tonight... I will be recording two of them, and I will be posting both. This being the first one, the second one being the next one that you listen to. I'm assuming, if you are listening in chronological order. Another cool thing is that while I was gone, I was actually gone for a wedding um, back home in Arkansas. My cousin was getting married, and I got to witness my very first Catholic wedding mass, which I thought was very cool, very beautiful, very uh, interesting, to say the least, from somebody who didn't grow up even slightly Catholic. But it was a gorgeous wedding. It was um, long, not gonna lie, it was long, but in a really like good way, I guess, in a way that kind of, I, I got to use it as kind of like a I don't want to say an experiment, but, you know, obviously, given that I run this podcast, I really got to observe it from kind of multiple angles. You know, I got to observe it from the obviously, oh, I'm happy to be here at a wedding angle, but also my fascination with religion and traditions within religion. So it was very, very interesting to see, for example, the priest, I hope I'm using that term correctly, uh, the priest was located at multiple different podiums throughout the service. A lot of the prayers he did in the very center of the room at an entirely different podium. So it was just super duper interesting, honestly. Um, kind of fascinating, to be honest, to, to witness. But anyway, I digress. That was just something cool that I thought happened and I thought I'd want to share with you. And I might even um, have people that were there on the podcast to just kind of talk about Catholicism because I have a lot of questions about what I saw. I learned what a homily is, did not know what that meant before. So even somebody like me who relentlessly studies religion to the point that I do had never heard of that. Like the word sounds familiar, but I didn't know what it meant. Regardless, I digress. Today is not the day that we're going to talk about Catholic masses, though. Uh, We're going to do something a little bit different. I have guests coming that I'm so excited about. I can't wait to have them on the podcast. I hope you've been enjoying the guests that I have had up until now. But um, in between these guests, we're going to do a couple of different things. I'm going to do a little bit of deep diving into different subjects that I find in different um, interesting relics, I suppose is the word. Interesting I hesitate to use the word facts, but uh, stories, for example, traditions, characters, things like that uh, throughout various religious texts, and we're just going to talk about them. The reason I decided to do this was because I found a magazine at Barnes & Noble from, where I don't have it with me, oh, Life Magazine did a print did a edition, did an edition, I should say, called Women of the Bible. So obviously I had to buy it because I was curious about what it would say about the women in the Bible versus what I have read about the women in the Bible in the Bible. And what caught my attention was not the focus of the women of the Bible, but instead the little side blurbs they had on the columns. If you guys have a chance to check this out, right now it's April 2022 and the Life Magazine Women of the Bible is currently on stands right now. I don't know how long it will be, but I encourage you to go find a copy and pick it up. And they had these little side burbs, slide, side blurbs called Beyond the Text, where they would cover characters not from the Bible, but from religious 
texts of other types. And so that is how I ended up researching about Lilith. That's what we're talking about today. So I'm just going to dive right in. So just to kind of quickly go over my sources, as you know, if you've ever listened to this podcast before, anytime I cite a source, I always link it in the show notes. I always cite my sources as well because I always want to be considered somebody who takes research very seriously. So anyway, I looked at historycollection.com. I looked at Life Magazine's Women of the Bible. I looked up the Biblical Archaeological Society. I also used Wikipedia, and I used an article called Bible Review that was published in October in, of 2001. So let's just dive right in. I know, I've, I've, why do I keep saying that? Lilith. Who is she? Let's talk a little bit about this character, Lilith. Is Lilith in the Bible? No, she is not. Is Lilith in the Torah? Yes, she is. Lilith is primarily a character uh, from the Hebrew Bible, specifically the book of Isaiah. She can also be found in Mandaean, I believe is how it's pronounced. I've only ever read the word Mandaean mythology slash cosmology. And the reason I put that in there is because whenever you look up Mandaean mythology, on Wikipedia, it takes you to a Mandian cosmology. So there you go. She is a being from Jewish mythology as well as the Babylonian Talmud. She appears in texts written in both the first and third century on a list of monsters. So Lilith was listed as a monster or a creature or an inhuman type demon uh, in most places where she shows up, which is very interesting. I gotta restart that. So here's where it gets interesting. And you're like, her being a monster is not the most interesting part? No, not in my opinion. Here's where things get really interesting. According to Mesopotamian and Judaic mythology, Lilith was Adam's first wife. Adam as in Adam and Eve. Adam as in the Adam and Eve of the first man and woman to ever grace the surface of the earth. If you're familiar with Christian doctrine, you know that Adam and Eve appear in the book of Genesis as the first man and woman ever created, ever in existence. They are created by God. Adam was created from the dirt of the earth and Eve was created from a rib of Adam. So she came from Adam. And basically, long story short, they were told not to eat the forbidden fruit by God because if they ate of the forbidden tree or the forbidden fruit from the tree that God told them not to eat, they would be banished from where they live, which was the Garden of Eden, which was this miraculous, beautiful place. A snake tells Eve to eat the apple. It's a whole thing. Anyway, Lilith was supposedly married to Adam before Eve, which to me is very interesting for multiple reasons. One, Adam and Eve were supposed to be the first beings on earth. Two, that means Adam got divorced at some point, which is a big no-no in a lot of religions, or he was practicing polygamy by being married to both Lilith and Eve at the same time. Because I couldn't find any actual verbiage indicating that they were ever actually divorced. So here's what happened. So the story is that Lilith and Adam were both created from the same dirt. They were, uh, they were created on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Again, only ever read the word, which is the Jewish New Year. And uh, she was banished from what I presume to be the Garden of Eden because she wouldn't act subservient to Adam. Now, when she was banished, she turned from God and she turned towards the devil. So it wasn't until this action of Adam abandoning her that she decided to no longer follow God and instead follow evil, follow the devil, follow the wrong way. Now God was very disturbed according to mythology when um, it didn't work out between Lilith and Adam. And so that's, I guess, supposedly, according to the text, that's when he learned his lesson and he decided to create Eve from Adam instead of from the same dirt that Adam was made from. So that's a little backstory there. So Lilith is considered a demon. She's considered an inhuman form, a temptress, and a baby thief. She is a winged spirit who preyed on pregnant women and infants. According to, quote, 
Meet Lilith, Adam's first wife that nobody wants to talk about, end quote, from HistoryCollection.com. Lilith is believed to be a demon who seduced men in their sleep by infiltrating their dreams and pleasuring them to the point where they want to act out in real life, causing them to cheat on their wives. Sounds like she basically gives them real... She gives them wet dreams is basically what happens. She gives them wet dreams and they are so turned on and lustful that they wake up in the, ne- the morning and they go cheat on their wives with real women in order to get that worked out of their system. She also entered the dreams of children, convincing them to act badly and committing sins. Lilith is oftentimes blamed for what we now know as stillbirth and SIDS. Some ancient cultures believed that Lilith was what came and killed those children in an act of revenge. Some believe Lilith was the snake in the Garden of Eden, which I thought this was very, very, very interesting. In Michelangelo's painting, The Fall of Man, in the Sistine Chapel, there's a woman slash snake hybrid figure seen wrapped around a tree. Perhaps it was Lilith who convinced Eve to eat the forbidden fruit as revenge on Adam, getting him too banned from the Garden of Eden, just like her. I thought that was such an interesting theory because there, sure enough, I looked it up, there is a half woman, half snake humanoid figure. And I can imagine that if you have just been kicked out of the Garden of Eden and you're no longer allowed to live in this paradise, you are going to want to get some revenge on your ex-husband who kicked you out. And baseline, you're going to want to get him kicked out. And who better to do that than through his new wifey that he replaced you with? But I thought that was absolutely fascinating. Here's a quote from the Kabbalah that states, And the serpent, the woman of harlotry, incited and seduced Eve through the husks of light, which in itself is holiness. For evil Lilith came to Adam against his will and became hot from him and bore him many demons and spirits and Lilin. Some think Lilin, which is often where they believe the name Lilith came from, represents ghost. So let's break down. I've thrown a lot of information at you. Let's break this down. Lilith is Adam's first wife. Adam says, hey, do what I say. Lilith says, no. He says, if you don't do what I say, you're getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden. She says, I dare you. He kicks her out of the Garden of Eden, after which she becomes this um, woman of harlotry, according to the Kabbalah. And she starts to, she turns towards evil. She turns away from God. She turns towards evil and she starts acting evilly. Now, according to a lot of what I was reading, she and Adam had many children that were demons, spirits, and ghosts. But I, one, I could not find evidence to support whether or not that was before or after she was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. I believe it was before though, which also leads me to believe then If she was kicked out of the Garden of Eden and did not turn towards evil until after that, then when they say that her children were demons, I'm curious if at any point in history, demons weren't necessarily considered bad. Is there such a thing as a good demon? That's, that was the thing that I was curious about. So anyway, she gets kicked out of the Garden of Eden. It isn't really clear if all of her kids come with her, if they're even born yet, if they're born later, not really sure. She gets very vengeful. She decides to take revenge on Adam and Eve and also get them kicked out of the Garden of Eden by appearing as the snake that then tempts Eve to eat the forbidden fruit and commit the first original sin. It is called an original sin in Christianity. And then after that, she infiltrates men's dreams, causes them to cheat on their wives, apparently commits rape, which is what this, to me, sounds like. Um, Because, I mean, it literally says right here, for evil, evil Lilith came to Adam against his will and became hot from him and bore him many demons and spirits and Lilin. So I'm guessing the kids came afterward, after she was kicked out of the Garden of Eden, because it describes her as evil Lilith. So not only does she get him kicked out of the Garden of Eden, but then she continues to get knocked up by him against his will while he's sleeping. And that's messed up. But here what I was what I thought was, uh, was the funny part. Uh, I looked up, I was looking really hard to find out what she looked like. What do they think Lilith looked like? And while nobody has a concrete answer for sure... There were two things that kept popping up over and over and over again regarding the description of Lilith. The first one being a redhead, the second one being a snake. Redheaded snake. And you know, 
I can think of at least a half dozen men who would describe me the exact same way. Am I right? Anyway, I thought that was really interesting. It's a little bit brief, you know, kind of a quick one. What is this, like a little bit over 20 minutes? Um, that's Lilith. Not a human. Not a, necessarily a ghost. Not a snake. Not a woman. She's a monster. She's a lilin. She's a demon. She is no good. But I'm so curious, and feel free to comment your thoughts um, wherever, whatever platform you happen to be listening to this on. I'm curious what you think, if she was always a demon, what do you think she was like in the Garden of Eden? What do you think she was like before she turned away from God and towards sin after being removed from the Garden of Eden? I'm curious, what is a demon before they are evil? What is a demon before they turn towards evil? Is there an alternate? Is there an alternative meaning? For example, anybody who's familiar with the Hebrew Bible or um, with Judaism, is there a demon in Judaism that is not evil? Is that an angel? Is that a spirit? Is that a presence? I'd like to know. So you know, your favorite, well, your second favorite redheaded snake. I like to think I'm your first, according to. HistoryCollection.com, Life Magazine, Women of the Bible, which I highly recommend you go out and buy a copy of or, or find one somewhere to check out from your library, Biblical Archaeology Society, Wikipedia, and Bible Review from October 2001. And that's it. Thanks, ladies and gents. Bye.